receive power, that's the Holy Spirit, when he's come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the end of the earth. God has only one plan. He has only one plan to proclaim the truth of the gospel, and the only person who can be proclaiming the gospel is a personal, first-hand witness. So if you're a believer, you're the only one God has. You and I were the only ones. And believers are to be his witnesses and tell the story. Now that does mean this. We're not supposed to argue his case. We're not lawyers. We're told to be his witnesses. That means your life and my life needs to be changed and so transformed that others might see Christ in you and Christ in me. When your life is obedient and you are truly walking after him and a disciple, people will see Christ in you. That's what he wants us to do. So be his witness and just tell the good news. You just tell people the good news about Jesus Christ and what he's done in your life. Leave the results with God. Leave it with God because when you and I try to be the Holy Spirit, it doesn't work. You and I cannot be the Holy Spirit. Now the Holy Spirit is in you and me, and He empowers us and He gives us the words to say, but you need to realize that when you told your story and how God saved you and what difference He's made in your life, and people look at your life and they say, I don't see it. You tell me you're changed. I don't see it. You sure sound like you're hostile to me and angry at me. Do you really care about me? They ain't going to believe it. So you got to be careful that the way we witness to people is sharing the wonderful good news in humility that Jesus loved me and he sent us, he died for me and saved me. Mark 16, 19 says, So after Jesus spoke to them, he was received up into heaven. See the different accounts in the scriptures say the same story, but they say it a little different. And sat down at the right hand of God and they went out and preached everywhere. That's one of them that I like. I like Mark. It's like right at it. He says they, he was received into heaven, sat down, and they went out and preached. They, the word there means proclaiming, told their story, told it. And the Lord, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. They just went out and did it. They didn't know any better. So this guy's looking up and he's wondering, Jesus is coming back. When he had spoken these things in verse 9, while they watched, he was taken up, and the cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as Jesus went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Man of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will, go, will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. So my question is this. Jesus is coming back is today the day. What if it were today? Have we witnessed to the people we are supposed to witness to? Have we worked with someone to help someone else become a disciple? Or if we are a new believer and we're not a disciple yet, have we said, okay, I'm willing to learn. I want to learn so that I can pass it on to others who will pass it on to others. That's what a disciple does, that you get changed then you want to help someone that you want to help someone else get their life in right with God and then so that they can go help someone else. That's what you do when you're a disciple. You just keep on passing it on and hope and pray that we got enough time to reach the people we're supposed to reach now before it's too late. Is he coming back today? I don't know. But I know this. I want to be about doing the things that he wants me to be doing when he comes back. I won't be ashamed.